Join us this evening. I'm Hugh Hefner, your host. I'm sure you know Dan Rowan, Dick Martin. We're going to have a fun time this evening. We're glad you're here. But I've got a little, uh, a little bone to pick with you fellas. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, getting you know. hungry. <laughs> Not that kind of bone. Oh. <laughs> Last season you used Playboy quite a bit uh, on the show, and I thought that was very nice. But this year you've come out with a magazine, yeah. the Laugh In magazine, mm -hmm. and I really feel, uh, you know, you're coming in competition with me. Oh. Oh, no, not really. No. Well, Ours is uh, a funny, maybe nice readers good magazine. Or yeah. Like yeah. Mm, well, the first issue had a gatefold yeah. with Gladys as your bunny. Well, well Reader's Digest our, has a gatefold. Our, I mean, you didn't know that. That's our sex symbol. That gatefold. That's our sex symbol. That's uh, Gladys is your sex symbol. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's uh, a particular problem of your own. However, <laughs> <laughs> in this issue. If you don't dig it, don't <laughs> knock it, baby. <laughs> All right, now, in this issue, yeah. uh, this is the second issue of Laugh in Magazine. And it's even funnier than the first. Yeah, yeah well, the cover certainly is. You've got an old passport picture of me here. And <laughs> you're um, as hard to photograph as Howard Hughes, you know. There aren't any existing <laughs> pictures of you around. I how think come, he looks good. How come Gladys looks better than I do? I don't no, understand. I think she looks adorable. Well, I, actually, uh, I'm very I delighted to... I think he to, liked it. I did like it, really. Oh, yeah. Seriously, I thought it was, was wonderful. As a matter of fact, it took 15 years for Playboy to get wherever it is. And uh, in just two issues, two fellows with Laugh-In magazine have, have done so much for publishing. Yes, but I, uh, knowing you were going to be here today, I wanted to, um, I wanted to present oh. you with a special award. Oh, oh he's going to give us an award. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, now be quiet and let the man try and get oh. through this next speech. Go ahead. Yes, I wonder <laughs> if I can get through this. This is the Bent Bunny. The uh -huh. Bent Bunny. The Bent uh -huh. Bunny. And this is because you fellows have uh, been the most sub-lapsernistic thieves of the year. Well done, sir. I yes. think yeah, now, it deserves a yes. big round of applause. I want you to look that up in your funkin' wag. <laughs> <laughs> just really don't know what to say, pal. It's so smart. Well, you could say uh, what my aunt once said uh, after she'd been locked in a mattress factory uh, uh, with 14 crazed Bedouin horsemen in their horses. <laughs> How do you like I that? don't want to hear it, much less say it. Oh. <laughs> hey, Hef, you know, it's kind of funny that you gave us an award. I mean, you want to talk about a coincidence. I mean, if you got nothing else to do, we could talk Let's about coincidence. Talk about it's listen, as a matter of fact... We brought you an award. Yeah, but as a matter of fact, mm. we haven't told him about our prop man, huh? Didn't you mean our prop man? Uh, our no. prop man, Ralph? Ralph. Uh, Ralph, come on in with the Flying Fickle Finger of Fate Award. <laughs> oh, this is your prop man, Ralph. This is Ralph. Yes, yeah. Ralph. You're on the same kind of show, aren't you? Oh, there you go, See? sir. Now then, uh, Hef, you are awarded this month's Flying Fickle Finger of Fate Award because out of your consummate greed, <laughs> because of whatever peculiar reasons you have to support your ever-rising stable of lovelies, you have raised the price of that notoriously infamous magazine of yours like from 75 cents to a dollar. Thereby, <laughs> thereby depriving hundreds of bachelors across the country of the certain necessities of life. That's right, that's right. Well, so, I, you got it coming to you, pal. There you go. <laughs> I really, I never expected, well. I really never expected this honor, and I, now I'm gonna have to figure out where to put it. Well, Listen, I could um, tell you where to put it. <laughs> no, he hasn't got any room. Oh! <laughs> on the trophy shelf. Oh, oh. probably have one of the most exciting poems I have seen for a long time. I'll drink to that. Very interesting. <laughs> You'll drink to the yellow pages, that is. <laughs> Let me say, uh, look at, take a look at that. Oh. You know that you are, this evening, are going to meet a tall, unattached bachelor. Yeah. Comic. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. He's going to lay some stuff on you. <laughs> I see it right here. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, and, and he's going to tell you lots of things that you're going to like to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. all going to be lies. Who cares? <laughs> Get it on. Be lies. And his name is Farquhar 
No, that's no, not. No, 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 that's. Would you look again? Uh, Elmer. El, not Elmer. No. Dummy. Uh, D. There, I see a D there. Yeah. Dick. Go, go, go. Dick. Yeah, yeah. Whittington. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Well, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> Dick. Oh. Martin. Uh, Dick, Dick Martin. You're going to meet a Dick, meet Martin. Dick Martin. Martin. You're in a lot of trouble, little girl. <laughs> Kathy, I understand that you just got back from uh, the Brazilian festival, and uh, the festival, the music festival, uh, is really becoming an international phenomenon. I've never uh, been to a festival outside the States. Uh, how do they compare? Oh, they're great. It's great. The people in, uh, in Brazil are so friendly and so warm. You know, they make you feel like you've been there all your life, you know? And their enthusiasm for music is like something else. You can't, you have no idea. It's just great, great. What kind of spectrum of music uh, is involved? Uh, what is it, jazz, folk, and South American? Or? Everything, everything from all different countries and from all around and every type of music and uh, everything that you can imagine. It's just beautiful, it's great, really. Now also, uh, outside the country, I think that um, on the international scene, there's far more competition in music. They have organized uh, competitive things that uh, they don't really have here in the States. I wonder they why. Don't have here. Yes, I wonder why that's true. Well, I, I wouldn't know myself really. The only thing I could think of would be that we have like television and movies and we can watch this, you know, every night, every day, you know, and they don't have the same thing, you know? So it becomes a much bigger event. Right, right. And, and uh, it's, it's unbelievable. You have to see one, you know, it's like a Mecca. You have to go. Yeah, well, great. now that you're back here in the States and uh, with us here at Playboy, I wonder whether you'd uh, entertain the kids with a song. I'd love to.
Some win, some lose. Everybody place your bets. Everybody, do we see any bets out there? Aha, uh -huh, I get it now. Stu Gilliam has bet his entire fortune on number three. Here we go. Round and round they go, but nobody. Four cookies? Oops. Yes, chocolate chip. Hey, sick, it's black, Stu. Double zero. Nobody wins. The house wins, and everybody. And still, uh, I'm sorry. I'm getting out of here. This game is rigged. You lost your cookies, baby. That's the way it goes. Cookies, too, if you came to a hefter party and there all you, go. you got was cookies. That's your cut. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, uh, see you later. Cookie, yeah, if you throw a great party, yes, now, cookies okay. and milk. That's the way it is, bro. What kind of cookie was that? <laughs> I think that was a fortune cookie. A fortune cookie. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Chocolate chip and all that goodness. Stu, I've been delighted to see how well you're. Um, your career is going. You've really been, uh, I've seen you more on television the last uh, few months than uh, around the scene. Yeah, me and the whole black nation, man. That's right, that's right. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a new thing on television, a black and white explosion on color television, which is really weird because I think I've been mistaken for everybody in the world. You know, because nobody can tell us apart, you know. <laughs> so I'm doing a whole new thing called a pause for Negro identification. <laughs> Because little old ladies come up to me, you know, they say, aren't you Sammy Shore or Flip Wilson, you know? <laughs> or they mistake me. I'll tell you who I really get it is the guy on Mod Squad, squad Clarence Roy, especially <laughs> when I wear the glasses. And a lot of people, Dan was talking about it, says, I talk like Bill Cosby. And a lot of people say, well, don't you get mad at that? And I figure, why? You know what I mean? I shouldn't be jealous of Bill. I make more money in one <laughs> month than he makes all day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, you know, you can't knock him, you know. After all, they did give him a couple of Emmys, even if it was a mistake. <laughs> no, the only reason they gave him the Emmys in the first place is because they thought that was a new idea, you know, the idea of having colored detectives and secret servicemen. And actually, it's old hat because we've been having them. <laughs> no, really, we've been having them. <laughs> no, really. Who do you think Boston Blackie really was? <laughs> What about Sam Spade, remember? <laughs> You're old enough for radio. What about the shadow? <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men the shadow do? <laughs> Who said that? Somebody gonna get a nasty letter from Rap Brown in the morning. <laughs> I don't know, though. It's re it, it really is confusing. A lot of people even uh, have mistaken me for Sidney Poitier. <laughs> you know, the French actor. <laughs> Now, I think this guy plays Negroes great. <laughs> I mean, now stop and think about it. Even your big actors, Paul Newman, he ain't never played a Negro. <laughs> Rod Stagen in The Heat of the Night, he's the first one to get the script, had his choice. <laughs> Didn't take the whole wheat roll, baby. <laughs> and you know why? Logical reason. Now, most people would jump to, he knew that this picture was going to be filmed in Biloxi, Mississippi. Now, let's face facts. If I was going to do a picture in Biloxi, Mississippi, I'd have to be the white police, too. <laughs> but, uh, people, you know, people just get shook up over all of these things. And, well, I tell you, and, oh, there's, a, there's another one on. Julia. Julia proves that black and white can live together in harmony as long as they got a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you, th th now, there is some good coming out of this because it is bringing about a heightened awareness and sensitivity in fellow man. You know, I mean, people are really starting to have empathy for the other fellow. Sure, you know what I mean? I'm on the way up in the elevator, you know, and I'm standing there, happy. White fellow standing next to me nudges me. He says, hey, buddy. I said, yes. See, you a member of the NAACP? <laughs> <laughs> Four. 
or the student non-violating coordinating committee? I said, no. So you're a black panther? I said, no, you're a black Muslim? I said, no. I said, well, in that case, would you mind getting off my toe? <laughs> Put the Chinese one up front, the colored one right there in the middle so it don't get hurt. Boy, the really glass right, and the I'm Indian good. right over there. The Indian. Yes, the Indian <laughs> right over there. That's right. Now, that's, that's a rail integrated, yeah. yes. Okay. yes. You got it correct. You ain't going to help him, man. All right. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you really want to play with me, huh? Yeah, go ahead. Take a shot. You put me on? Go on. Try I've your best. I've studied with Willie Moscone. I don't care. Go ahead. Willie Hoppy. Sure. And <laughs> Willie Mays. Oh, well, he, he's some kind of fool shooter. <laughs> but I blew the cue ball. <laughs> well. it wouldn't, there you go. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hey, help. baby. That's help. black power. <laughs> hey, how come the cue ball's white, Stu? <laughs> I don't know how many of, uh, of our gang know it, but uh, Paul Hampton wrote one of the really, really beautiful love ballads of our time. I'm in love with a bunny from the Playboy Club. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I remember how it went. Last night I went with some friends to the Playboy Club to live it up. And I saw a girl. I wanted to make my own true love. Yes, I did. She was a bunny in a little pink costume, the prettiest girl I ever seen. With her two pink rabbit ears are sticking up. I said, that's the girl for me. But the problem was how to pick her up when every guy in the place had tried. Last night I fell <laughs> head over heels in love with a swinging bunny. Playboy club where she came to our table and said, can I take your order? I said, sure. I said, bring me half a dozen swinging little bunnies like you. I was trying to be cute. She said, we're uh, here to serve the customers and to lend some atmosphere. Is there anything else that you have in mind, mister? You can't get it here. See, she put, she, uh, she, uh, she put me down. So I thought I'd try Little White Lies. So I sized up the girl. I figured she wanted to be an actress. So I said, I'm a talent sketch. You ought to be in the movies. I'll mean it. She said, uh, you really think so, mister? Uh, I guess, I don't know. I guess that's the way it goes. Anyway. <laughs> Leave them hanging, you know. Now, Paul, I yeah. you just finished your, uh, your first film, More Dead Than Alive. That's yeah. the title, I think. It's very funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, since you mentioned that, I, I, met, I had a chance to meet Judith Christ yesterday, incidentally. We're talking, and I, she has a new book coming out. And talking. I said, I just finished a new picture, yes, for UA, called More Dead Than Alive. And she said, well, I, I can see the review of the picture, right? You know, Right away, more dead than alive. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> but uh, so I said, I figured if you come out good out of a picture with a title like that, then you know you can't be all bad. So now you were in Keep Clint our Walker as the star, I think. Uh, yeah, it must be kind of strange playing in a film with a guy his size. He's. Uh, has anybody ever seen him? <laughs> I mean, in person. He's a giant. He. I tell you how big he is. Like I'm six feet tall, and uh, you're about that, aren't you? But he. Pardon he's me. six feet. <laughs> <laughs> he's six. <laughs> It depends on the day. Some days I'm six foot two, and some days I'm five foot four. I just spilled a drink here. Oh, oh, that's all right. Uh, no, he's about six feet wide. You know, going for starters. You know, he's, he's about six six. You know, so all you can do in terms of staying in a scene is to live in a scene. You know, is to like smile a lot and use your tongue. You know, and, <laughs> and kind of you know hope that you can come along with a little vitality or something. It's you fun. write uh, you write almost everything that you do, don't you? Or a great majority of the songs. The only songs I know are my own. I think. Yeah. How about doing? Uh, one all the way through for us. Great, love to. Yeah. yeah. Remember the time I was yours, you were mine. We were flying towards eternity. What you say? You say it wasn't you. But you so high above me You were my moon and my sun What you say? You say it wasn't you? Yeah, well Well, it was someone Wait, now I think I remember Yeah, we were strolling down the lane Earlier one September, eating ice cream in the rain. 
you said I gave you such joy and delight and that I was your reason for being wasn't safe you say it wasn't safe It is, yeah, it is for me. I'm from Oklahoma City, naturally, uh, and uh, um, not naturally, but it's, it kind of follows through. Makes sense. Uh, uh, Dallas Morning News doesn't sound good. <laughs> uh, and uh, the lyrics of the song are pretty much where I'm at right now, where my head is at. Uh, I'm not living my life to go out with a whimper, but a bang. Want the world to remember me by deed, if not by name. Who knows if I'll own a mansion or just a cabin in the pines? But I want to be more than just two lines in the Oklahoma City Times. How about singing it? Okay. I'm not living my life to go out with a whimper but a bang. Want the world to remember me by deed, if not by name. But who knows if I'll own a mansion or just a cabin in the pine. But I want to be more than just two lines in the Oklahoma City Times. Oh, I say I'm not counting on riches or fame to make my mark. The best I can do is touch someone and hope they feel my spark. Maybe add a little sunlight where no sun ever shines. Cause I gotta be more than just two lines in the Oklahoma City time. I say I don't want just family, Lord. Or some of my so called friends shedding half sad, half courteous tears. Perhaps their soul depends. So I'm prepared to go most anywhere the journey winds. But I gotta be more than just two lines in the Oklahoma City Times. Yes, I gotta be more than just two lines in the Oklahoma City I seem to recall that, uh, weren't you originally a part of a, a group called the Real uh, Martin and Lewis? Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was kind of odd because uh, uh, when Martin and Lewis were at Slapsy Maxie's uh, on Wiltshire Boulevard, uh, uh, I teamed up with a guy named Artie Lewis and we worked the uh, Strand Theater in, in uh, Long Beach for a split week. <laughs> and uh, it was disastrous, but uh, we were, uh, he, his name was really Artie Lewis, and mine was Dick Martin, so uh, Abby Greshler, who handled Martin and Lewis at the time, says, hey, you guys got to change your name. I said, no, let them change their names to Corsetti and Levitch. That's the real name. <laughs> that's right, that's their real names. Do you guys remember the, uh, I'm sure you do, but um, where did you originally meet? Over there them. at the pool table. <laughs> <laughs> Before I made that. a bad Before shot. <laughs> Before that, we met, uh, we met out here in California. Yeah. Studio, I was, Studio City. Studio City. I was a bartender, and he was hustling used cars, as I recall. 
and a guy named... Or whatever presented itself. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering why you made more money than I did. <laughs> and I, uh, a, guy, a guy named Tommy Noonan, uh, Noonan and Marshall, introduced us and uh, helped us get together and uh, started the act. Why do you think you're able to do so much uh, adult fare on Laugh-In now? Because we have some very naughty pictures of the heads of the network. I see. That <laughs> <laughs> doesn't hurt anything. <laughs> I think the whole the whole industry has kind of grown up, uh, Hef. You uh, you and your publication had a big influence. You as everybody pioneered knows. an awful lot. And uh, Lenny Bruce and our field had a great influence on breaking through some rather hypocritical barriers. Buddy Hackett. Left over from the Victorian people like days. That. And um, today, television actually is a follower. We're, we're, we're called an innovator in the field, but we're simply doing today on television what has been done not only in your magazine, but on legitimate theater stage, newspapers, and uh, motion pictures for the past uh, several years. Television's We've finally caught up. Yeah. We have the same theory uh, that you have, uh, although I'm, uh, I don't know. Yes, we do, really. Uh, that to spit uh, it right out there. <laughs> I've always been a sure, that's really easy for you to say. <laughs> good talker. Well, no, I was weighing what I was going to say. Uh, that uh, about a pound uh, and a half. <laughs> a talk, uh, a talk about sex, for instance, is an, an awful lot more acceptable to us anyway uh, than violence. I mean, you could see mm -hmm. a, a, oh, say, a rerun of combat and see maybe 50, 60 guys killed, mowed down and everything, and people say, yeah, yeah, that's wild. But uh, if you mention, hey, uh, two people with, oh, you couldn't say that, you know? So uh, we've always felt that uh, that is not as offensive. <laughs> Did I get to you at all? <laughs> well, what kind? You didn't know what those guys on combat were fighting for. <laughs> <laughs> to get on our show so they could go, Wee! What kind of things do you still have trouble with? Uh, what kind of things do the network... Uh, Trying to keep a bra on Goldie is about the best. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have trouble with? Um, actually, the biggest problem we have on a show such as ours, as you can imagine from an editorial point of view, looking over material, is material. Because we gobble it up pretty quickly on the show every week. And uh, to do that much volume of comedy material with no relief from any other area is a, is a hard job. That's the hardest thing on the show. As far as getting things on the air, that isn't a problem because if they're tasty and if they say something or if they're funny, that's the first rule, then it gets on. NBC has been very nice to us. We have a brilliant set of writers. Uh, they're just great. Yeah. Uh, well, having uh, been on the show with you fellas, I, uh, <laughs> I have a feeling that one of the ways you accomplish it is just, it's just kind of overwhelming them with so much material that they don't really know where they're at. and it gets, They get numb, so they don't know which material is, um, is double on time and which isn't. Uh, uh, do the censors uh, pick on both of you uh, the same, or do they, uh, you find that one... Oh, they don't really, I, if you want a serious answer to the question, they don't really pick on uh, either one of us. They sometimes get a little uptight about uh, their construction of a joke. <laughs> we, however, from the goody-goody uh, point of view, uh, <laughs> never mean anything but the best. No, no. And uh, <laughs> they, however, oh. sometimes have a rather devious way of looking at things. That's they right. They see things that are not really there. I, That's right. They point out things just we said. Well, can't understand how, how they... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if that's the way their mind works, uh, Hef, you know, you got to go along with it. That's right. Well, Dan, I, I know that um, you're always trying to get uh, Dick's mind off of girls, and I wonder when you're going to give up on that as a lost cause. Well, if, uh, since his skin is cleared up, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I, I don't know. My uh, my idol has always been Hugh Hefner, and I'm going to follow. If 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 he'll blow in his my ear, I'll follow him anywhere. <laughs> Dick, would you uh, would you ever uh, go on a double date uh, with Dan? Well. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about us. But, uh, <laughs> I keep telling you, not on the air. I keep forgetting. Uh, 
<laughs> no, actually, I, uh, uh, Dan is a married person, and he likes to sit home, <laughs> and he likes to sit home and, and, and look at things with his, with his wife, what? you know? <laughs> <laughs> you but I've been trying to get an invitation. <laughs> No, I, I like to go out with nice ladies and... Uh, no, you don't. Well... <laughs> You've never been out with a nice lady since I've known you. Zelda, you don't oh, remember yes, Zelda? Oh, yes, sir. That's Got rid of her quick. Yeah. No, but... No, but uh, actually, we don't double date because it's hard for a, uh, a married uh, couple and a single couple to go out together because... You know, Unless I mean, the married couple's a little weird, you know. <laughs> and I've been looking for a weird married couple. <laughs> well, Dan, what is your, uh, what's really the way he got off that, isn't it? <laughs> he, not, he wasn't born every minute. He doesn't, read, he doesn't read that free press for nothing. Go ahead. Well, I w I'm not really changing the subject. I just wondered what uh, is your idea of a, of a really good time? Of a really good time? Mm -hmm. Oh, a glass of milk and a trip to T Tijuana, I think. <laughs> no, my, my, my idea of a good time is just to, just to stop and, and look around and listen to everything that's going on. And uh, most people, I think, miss most of happiness because they're too busy searching for it. And they don't realize that they're going through those periods of happiness at the time. That's the reason many, uh, many people sit around and they reminisce about, wasn't that great then? Wasn't it wonderful when we did so and so? But they didn't realize it at the time. And um, life is a very full, rich experience, and most of us treat it, I think, as a banquet and only eat the salad. You know, there's a lot to it, and uh, it's a pretty difficult thing to be specific about. Uh, I know you spent a lot of time on your boat. Yeah, when that's you're, that's you're... a good. Well, that that is not always a good time. Sometimes it isn't uh, isn't as much fun as others, but it's always better than uh, anything else. Well, um, I take Dick, exception uh, to that. Uh, <laughs> okay, Dick, uh, we know that Dan spends most of his free time on the boat. Uh, where are you? Well, uh, I say that uh, if you could find a nice lady <laughs> who has a friend... <laughs> no! <laughs> no, I... <laughs> No, I, I think that uh, I like... Uh, I we know what you like. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to get around that. No, I, I dig being with the uh, uh, comics and, and, uh, and, you know, the guys, like, uh, Buddy Hackett and, and uh, the, a bunch of guys like uh, Milton Berle. I don't really dig that. <laughs> no, you, 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 what you do is you do whatever you want until 10, 30, 11, then go find a nice lady. I'll drink to that. There you go. <laughs> That's my <laughs> idol, Hugh Hefner. <laughs> uh, those crazy little fuzzy butts. <laughs> Entertainment going here. Let's, uh, let's, no, just this. <laughs> I came to see a little show biz. Clara, I, uh, I understand that uh, you brought gospel music to Las Vegas, and the reaction even surprised you. It certainly did. We went down there for two weeks, and uh, after the second night, uh, they booked us for 40 weeks a year for three years. It's really <laughs> incredible. Now, the, the uh, gospel. Clara Ward, uh, gospel singers, also uh, appeared recently at Disneyland. Yes, uh, seven summers uh, for 12 weeks a year. Uh -huh. They just got back from Japan. How did they react uh, in the Orient? To... They love gospel music over there. This is our third trip over there. And the amazing thing about it, they clap on the uh, one and three. On the offbeat. The, and the people here clap on the two and four. So, you know, they're right with the gospel over <laughs> do there. Do they understand the music? Do they have any frames of reference? Uh, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. They do that. Yeah. Well, I think that what um, our party really needs is a little gospel sound. So I wonder if you could get the girls together and maybe give us a little we'd Clara love, Ward gospel singing. We'd love to.
Should the shadows come yeah. well, should my heart feel lonely oh, yeah. and long for heaven and a home? Join us this evening. I hope you had a good time. Remember, we're going to be here again next week, same time. Until then, good night.
arrangements provided by Sabrina Airlines. Europe begins in Brussels and Sabrina flies there every day.